I think um, from last time, uh, just as a quick recap, you were in London and you just got this uh, letter from a old mentor of yours uh, in a, by, by the name of Colleen Moran. And the letter read, My dearest friends, my retirement to Dungurney Manor has not gone as well as I had hoped. It seems that the darkness of the Cabal has followed me to Ireland, perhaps to seek revenge for the destruction I brought upon them. Over the past two months, there have been attacks on locals by a headless rider mounted on a black stallion. Four souls have sadly crossed to the beyond since this creature's arrival. I cannot help but feel guilt for the dead as this creature has no doubt been lured here to seek vengeance upon me. I would combat the horseman myself but I am left bedridden by my rapidly declining health and I am impotent against this menace. Please my friends, I beg of you, come to Ireland and come to my aid one last time. Yours eternally, Colleen Moran. Ireland then. To Ireland and uh, before you left you actually did some um, research and did it rather well around um, London looking for information about um, Headless Horseman and you came up with a particularly Irish um, version of it which is the just give you the information again so you know she's a duller hand Now the Dullahan is a headless spirit that rides at night and it seeks out the souls of the dying, um, th those that are about to uh, go to the afterlife. It finds them before their time and takes their souls, taking them to hell instead. The Dullahan is usually encountered riding an ethereal black horse or a funeral coach with spokes made of bone and skulls for lamps. It carries a severed head under one arm and wields a whip made from human spines with the other. You'll know it's a quite terrifying creature. Um, you'll, you discovered last time that it was actually um, invulnerable to most normal weapons apart from gold. So you'd managed to furnish yourself with some gold plated weapons and the like. Um, you'd also heard rumours that um, it was unstopped by usual material locks and doors. It could uh, find itself moved through uh, barriers of, the, of those sorts um, and to basically get into people's homes. It was known to uh, kill people in their beds before they die. So Henry did buy those cold bullets and stuff, right? I think you did get some, didn't you? Have you, have you noted some down? I got one of my uh, cutlasses uh, dipped in gold. Ah, oh, that's right. And did we get some... Oh, ah, maybe, yeah. Uh, sorry. Weapon gilded in 10 bullets. Excellent. Okay, so you're quite well equipped then. Are we sure these shiny weapons are going to do something to the Headless Horseman? There's really just one way of finding out, I guess. Try it. Try it. Experiment. Very well. So, without further ado, you book passage to um, the Dungurney Manor in at Southern Ireland to visit your friend Colleen. You've travelled by train up to Bristol and then from Bristol you get a ferry across to Dunleary. And from Dunleary you charter a horse and carriage to take you to the Dungurney Manor. And night is falling as the carriage draws up in front of the manor.
The manor is huge, though fairly um, neglected and a bit run down. There are weeds sort of creeping up around the cracks, and it's been uh, a long time since the windows have been cleaned and the like. So it's looking fairly uh, overgrown and um, run down. Well, this is very rustic. Also expensive, you probably think. Colleen is uh, known to be a very wealthy lady. I think with all her money, she would have uh, cleaned up the place a bit. <laughs> So, um, as you uh, head up to the uh, front door, the carriage that you hired uh, spins round to return to Dublin. And um, knocking on the large double door, it'll uh, creak open and a, a pretty girl uh, will uh, greet you on the other side. She's wearing a white dress and has uh, curly brown hair. Oh, uh, good evening. Um, you must be... Uh, my aunt's friends. Yes, we are. Oh, uh, please do do come in, come in, uh, my manners, and she'll creak open the door and sort of wave you inside the the main hallway. Nice to meet you, young lady. I'm Alphonse. This is Carl, and this is Sir Henry. Don't ask him how he lost his eye. <laughs> She'll look uh, curiously at Sir Henry's eye and say, and, and I am Claire, uh, niece to um, Colleen. But of course, I, I forget my manners. You, you must be tired and hungry. Should I take your coats and perhaps uh, get you some supper? Yeah, but uh, there's Colleen. Well, of course, if you, you wish to see her, I could uh, take you take you through. Um, sadly, I, I'm terribly worried about her. She's uh, been really uh, ill of late. Claire will um, beckon you um, forward and take you th to through the sort of echoey hallways of this mansion. It's uh, very deserted, looks very hollow and empty, the whole place. You know, it's funny, Colleen didn't mention a niece. She didn't. She never mentioned her niece. Is there anyone else living here? Uh, it, it was my... Uh, Colleen uh, lived here uh, alone. She, she's always been uh, a recluse, but uh, myself, um, well, my sister, uh, Caitlin, and um, uh, my uh, nephew, Oh, sorry, my cousin, um, Randall. He, um, we, we came to visit Colleen, and uh, uh, shortly after she fell ill, lost sound. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you lose my sound? I think so. Yeah, I the... Lost the last part of what you said just there. Oh, sorry. Um, she basically has said that her sister Caitlin is here as well as her cousin Randall and they both um, came to visit a, uh, a couple of months ago and since then uh, poor Colleen's health has, uh, has, has deteriorated much worse. It's lucky Claire will say that uh, we, we've been here to uh, look after her. Old age is such a terrible thing. Yes, yeah, unavoidable sadly. She leads you through into a downstairs uh, large uh, bedroom. As you enter, the room is um, stuffy with um, the smell of uh, sickness and um, stale sweat. And in the bed, in the centre of the bed, is the uh, frail and emaciated form of uh, your friend Colleen. You last saw her about a year ago and she was the picture of vitality and health at that time. Though she, she was elderly and had retired from, uh, from fighting the forces of the Cabal. 
mentor. You look well. Guys, don't tell her she looks horrible. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, smiles weakly at you. Uh, I wish that was true. But I sadly do not feel... And as she says that, she waves a hand um, towards Claire, and Claire will rush forward and uh, grab a uh, pot which is sitting beside her bed, and she um, rolls over um, towards the the pot and um, is uh, sick into it. You can hear her retching. After Guys, a while, I think she's really sick. Don't tell her. Go ahead. Uh, nothing. After a while, then she leans back and sort of Claire will um, wipe her, her mouth and she says, I, I'm sorry, it is uh, uh, quite embarrassing. There's some terrible nausea I'm suffering. But uh, tell me, um, I, I'm so pleased that you could could visit me to to help out that this creature it's stalking the the land around here and i, I can't rest it's uh, troubling my dreams my, my nightmares it is uh, preying on the locals and i fear it is all my fault of course mental we would always come to your call have you been able to find out anything about the creature in london uh, not at all but we'll definitely look into it. Yeah, well, it we research on uh, about gold. It it can it can be hurt by gold weapons, evidently. Splendid. And do you have some some of these weapons? I'm thinking about rolling bluff, but I don't have some. Skill like that. Be uh, persuade if you have it. Yeah. Why would you like to her? Like your own mentor? Because there's someone else in the room. Oh, you don't trust the, you don't trust kids. That's what's wrong with you. Yep. <laughs> After a little while, a, another um, woman who looks just like Claire. Uh, it appears to be her twin sister, Caitlin, uh, will enter the room. She is a little more quieter than Claire, though she curtsies uh, towards you and says, uh, uh, My aunt's friends, it is uh, so good that you could join us. Behind her is a wiry looking young man. He has got a sort of a, uh, a very uh, delicate moustache and um, fairly foppish uh, brown hair he um, will um, nod um, to you um, I hear you've um, come to uh, fuel my aunt's um, suspicions have you oh you know we just came to see an old friend that's asked for us to visit well, as you can see, my aunt is very sick. I, I do not want you filling your head with nonsense stories of uh, headless riders and the like. It's quite preposterous. It's obviously what's going on with the locals is there is some sort of murderer abound. Oh, of course, there was nothing supernatural happening anywhere in this world. Hmm. <laughs> What a fine mustache you have, young man. He um he, he looks at you with sort of like cold eyes and um says, "Well, um while you're here, Bertrand uh, makes sure to uh, stay out of my way." And he um, turns uh, on his heel and um, walks out of the door. You have a lovely family mentor. <laughs> She said, "He he means well. Do do not be hard on him. He he only has my best interests at heart." As we all, Claire will say, "Oh, ignore Randall. He's he's so rude. It's a pity we're cooped up here with him." 
so, young ladies, do you share his sensibilities? Do you not believe in the supernatural? Well, I, I'd like to... It is easy to think not, but the stories my aunt has told, I, uh, I would never doubt my aunt in this. And I, I for one, am pleased that you are here to uh, protect us, if it is indeed a spirit that is here haunting us. Uh, you know, is there anyone else in the mansion beside you? Some servants, maybe? Uh, my, my aunt likes to be uh, solitary. As a solitary woman, um, she lived here alone until we uh, came to, to visit. There, there's just myself and Caitlin who, who look after the place. And she, her head falls down a little, though it, it's not much we can do for the maintenance. It's such a, a big, a big estate. We are concerned mostly with looking after our aunt. So, has any doctor been to see her? Uh, a doctor did a visit uh, a few weeks back from uh, Dublin, uh, but he said there's very little that could, could be done for her. He, he uh, said it was her uh, old age which was finally catching up with her. Of course, Colleen thinks it's something to do with a, a spirit also that's come to take her, but I'm glad you're here now. Have there been any eyewitnesses that can confirm that this really is a dollar? Uh, the, I think these the it's just rumor um, of uh, what's happened. The, the talk in the in the village uh, is of a a uh, horseman. Were the, there any tracks in any of the murder scenes? Yes, but apparently the the guard, one lady, um, she was killed in her home, and there were hoof prints in the house, apparently, but no sign of forced entry. I, I've tried not to think too much of the deaths. There is a, a constable in town, a a guard who who could help you. We do excellent with guards. What is the man's name? The man's name is um, Aiden. The guard here are the uh, sort of Irish police, the guard. Maybe we should pay him a visit then. That would be a good idea. You could perhaps go um, tomorrow uh, into the village. Th there's not much there, but there is a small shop and um, Aiden re regularly frequents there. Yeah, the day has been long. I think we should have our dinner and go to bed. Is there any room in the mansion for us? Or rooms? Of course, I've prepared some uh, spare rooms at the in the north of the the building. I, I'll show them to you and, um, and and prepare some supper for you if you like. Claire will show you through to some spare rooms at the, the top. You can um, take your uh, pick of the, the rooms. One has uh, two beds and the other just a single bed. There's also a small um, study lounge uh, next uh, to it here with a, a, a small library. And uh, if you uh, need somewhere to relax. Are the twins still with us? Um, they are, yeah. They're, they're sort of showing you around. Uh, you're not sure where Randall's got to. This room that she takes you through, um, on the left, 
It's like a ballroom um, type area. <laughs> Not a throne room. Well, Sir Henley, as you are the most prestigious of us, I think you should have the larger of the rooms. I'm sure Carl wouldn't mind sharing a bunk with me. A bunk with more people? Yeah, prefer bunk beds. Okay, great. So Caitlin and Claire will uh, bring some uh, supper through to you. <laughs> Indeed, Sir Henry. <laughs> um, and to answer your question, Sir Henry, uh, Kate, uh, Caitlin will say, uh, me and my sister, we, we do the food and uh, look after our aunt. And we have to cook for Randall too. That's very nice of you, and an important skill in life. She'll um, nod curtsy again. She's uh, very polite. And, and do let me know if you need anything. Our, our uh, bedrooms are just upstairs on the second floor. Great. And with that at your request, she will leave you alone unless is there anything else that you wish to do? Um, well, I think we should all get uh, gather around in Sir Henry's room to discuss what we know already. Well, barely nothing so far. So, first of all, uh, Alphonse uh, put his finger next to his uh, face to make a shushing gesture and looks around to see if there are any vents in the room that lead to the upper floors that they can hear what we are saying. All right, uh, good idea. That's a notice roll. And of course, I'm not skilled in anything. Just unskilled then, I'm afraid. But you are your paranoia drives you <laughs> you onwards. You um, look around um, the, the the room. It, it is an old building. Uh, all the, the walls here are sort of stone. Uh, there's no uh, vent uh, in here. That um, you know nothing obvious anyway. That leads uh, that leads you know upstairs. You don't think anyone will be able to hear you. The walls are also quite thick. You'll notice uh, thick stone walls everywhere. Does make it a little echoey though. Okay, I think we can talk here undisturbed. The fireplace has been lit for you by the uh, sisters too. Yes, it is very strange. She never mentioned any family and all of a sudden she has three of them in her mansion alone with her on such a huge place. Yeah, I guess she didn't want to be alone when I'm here or hide the strangers, I suppose. Well, if she has enough money for such a huge house, she probably can afford a few servants. Also, that guy's mustache was horrible. <laughs> well, that, um, that we cannot get all of you, I suppose. Uh, so what's the plan? Do you think we should... Uh, go to the guard, or should we try to sneak into Colin's room? Or wait for tomorrow and see what's the, what the, all what is about. 
yes, that is also an option. Okay, so Sir Henry, you want to sort of snoop around the uh, mansion, do you, around the manor? I wish I had an alchemy skill, so I could taste best the food, but right now I guess the only option is to eat. Uh, okay, investigate is a written skill. It's for investigating written material. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Also, are you trying to be unseen as you uh, sort of snoop around these places, or are you trying to be stealthy about it? Okay, if you can make a stealth roll, which is unskilled if you haven't got it. <laughs> okay. Well, you're not particularly discreet, but you could spend a Benny if you wish. <laughs> All right. So, um, <laughs> you make a, a, a bit of noise it's an unfamiliar place and you are moving around by candlelight pretty much um so you'll um you'll bump and there'll be a few uh, sort of creaking floorboards and creaking doors and things as you as you move around this unfamiliar manner however you said you wanted to look in the library and you, you, there's actually two places where there are book books here uh there is a sort of extensive library study area there um, on the top um, right hand side of the of the manor and there is also in the snug that uh, you're invited into it's like a little living room there are some bookshelves in there as well um, in there you find um, in the snug there's quite a lot of sort of geography books books about um, foreign lands that perhaps Colleen's been to, um, tribes and uh, various jungle regions and, and the like, explorer traveller books. The other library here, you find books of a much more esoteric nature, magical books and uh, books about the occult and things more to do with her uh, career in the Rippers. And finally, you look into the kitchen. Um, looking through the kitchen, you don't find any poison uh, in there at all. You just have a look for poison you said and didn't find any. So, is there anything you wish to do with that information? I think Alphonse will just take a walk around the mansion, trying to see if there's a lot of dust, like uh, people are willing very few people have been living here, so dust accumulates in different areas. In uh, areas, some of which of them is more used than others, kind of thing. Well, that's a good idea. If you could give me a notice roll also. Okay. Are you happy with that, or do you wish to ban it? Uh, it's unskilled, so I don't think I have a lot of options in this, so I'll take it. Alright, you'll search around, there's quite a lot of dust everywhere really um, in the property. All the ornaments and picture frames and things have got dust lining across the top of them. All the hallways and walkways, um, they have got tracks in the in the centre where you can see the dust has been disturbed and the, the edges are you know a lot more sort of dirty around where the, the walls are. The place doesn't look like it's kept well. Um, Mostly because there there aren't enough people here to sort of maintain the, the the property. You don't 
some rooms haven't been visited very much. The uh, the large library, uh, the the one with the uh, supernatural books, has hardly been touched. You'll notice there's uh, a lot of dust around there, but you can't tell anything that specific from that notice roll, I'm afraid. Yeah, you can try as well. I'll take another um, notice from you as well, Sir Henry, if you want to do this. Yeah, really, you get that um, some rooms, the uh, crypt, the chapel, the uh, the library uh, aren't used very much, nor is the ballroom, and for that matter, neither is the dining room. It looks like the main rooms that have been used are the, the sort of route towards uh, Colleen's uh, bed, bedroom, um, up the stairs towards the uh, the niece's rooms. The kitchen's used, but a, a lot of the, the building really is, is uh, not used very much, you can tell. Can I roll tracking to see what type of tracks they are in the dust? Um, yeah, go on, it'll be, it'll be hard though, but yeah, you can try. Yeah, nope. you, you're not sure really, there's basically just clean patches. <laughs> now the dust's been sort of blown away. Well, I think uh, that's enough investigation for uh, tonight for me. I think I'll hit the sack. Okay. And um, finally, Sir Henry, you're uh, looking at the books. You haven't got a massive amount of time, but you look through them. There's some things that are interesting there, though, um, more like interesting to you rather than anything that would immediately pertain to this investigation. There's nothing on Headless Horseman or uh, or anything of the like, really. There's a lot of um, just, just funny uh, books uh, about various occult things from all around the world, really, which you think probably Colleen's gathered over a lifetime. <laughs> that helps you get to sleep, I'm sure, Carl. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm not going to do any investigating, just, yeah. All right. And you all uh, settle in for the for the night. Um, during the night, everybody make me a notice check at minus four, please. <laughs> it puts most of you at minus six. Oh, you've got notice. Okay, in which case the night passes uh, peacefully, uneventfully, and after such a long journey you're probably quite tired and um, sleep right through the evening. In the morning you're awakened uh, by the uh, delightful smell of bacon and eggs being um, fried from down the hallway in the, the kitchen. And there'll be a knock at your door, and um, Caitlin. Well, um, you'll hear Caitlin's voice. Uh, we've uh, cooked some breakfast for you at uh, in in the kitchen just down the hallway. Be there in a sec. Alphonse wakes up from a very deep sleep. Thank you. He calls to Colleen. Thank you, Colleen. We'll be right there. Okay. 
Colleen is uh, bedridden at the moment, so she um, has her uh, breakfast. She can only manage a sort of light broth. Okay, you arm yourself and uh, head down to, uh, to to the breakfast room and to the kitchen. So over here. <laughs> yeah, everyone knows human flesh tastes like pork. Wasn't it chicken? <laughs> Probably chicken, actually, yeah. Everything tastes like chicken. Okay, so uh, Colleen and Claire are there. Um, they uh, cook up some uh, coffee and uh, give you a, a nice uh, cooked breakfast. She says, will you um, require directions to the village? It, it's not far, it's just down the lane here. Uh, walking distance. Uh, yeah, I'm shooting. It is only about 20 minutes walk. I always like the Irish countryside. It would be a nice change from the London air. A big change from uh, London. London at this time was kind of known as for its, um, for its stench. The, uh, the sewer system hadn't been fully built yet, and the uh, Thames was essentially just a uh, open sewer. So yeah, after the stink stench of London and the smog of London, the uh, the countryside air will be uh, very pleasant, I'm sure. Just as you're finishing your breakfast, Randall will come in holding a bowl. Um, which he takes over towards the uh, sink area and just dumps it there for the nieces to clean. Good morning. He just um, looks at you, gives you a withered look and sort of nods. When do you... Randall is good people, I can tell. When do you plan to um, go back to London? I'm sure you've... Um... You'll uh, not have that much to do here. We we do have police f uh, force to deal with uh, murderers and the like. We'll stay until Colleen stop being paranoid about the uh, the murders. Yeah, we're just taking a tour of the country. Don't worry, my lad. Hmm. Now, if the twins are still in the room, I ask them for a second helping. They smile, of course. The larder here is pretty well stocked, um, and they uh, are happy to give you a second helping. Wonderful. As they leave, I want to check out the ball we had in the, the sink. If it's any blood in it, or is it just conflicts? You uh, look in the bowl, and it's got a very uh, weak... Um, yeah, it, it basically he'll throw some uh, of it away, but it looks like it had a very weak, watery broth in it. Okay, he's a good boy. So, shall we go meet Aiden? Might as well. Maybe we should uh, have one of the children with us to introdu for introductions, or do you prefer us to go alone? 
uh, Colleen's name should probably carry enough weight here. So uh, uh, it will probably be fine. I'd like to keep watch over my own too, as Claire, if you're talking in front of them. Yeah, that's fine. That can be in front of her. Okay, so I have nothing to it. And so you uh, head out of the manor, and it's uh, quite a uh, bright um, autumn morning as you uh, head down the lane. It does indeed take about 20 25 minutes walk before you uh, arrive at Dungorny village. The village is uh, small, it's just a collection of a few homes. The surrounding area are, is uh, farmland, a very rural uh, area, low population density. Um, there is, however, a small um, store which serves as the uh, post office and um, everything else um, here. Okay, John Sinclair, got it. Smell this ale, gentlemen. This is how else is supposed to smell like. Yes, it's definitely countryside smells here. And um, just outside the, the shop in the uh, centre of uh, town, you'll see the, um, a, you, you presume as a shopkeeper, he has an apron on, a sort of butcher's apron. And um, standing next to him is a rather rotund and rosy-cheeked um, gentleman who's wearing a guard's uniform, a, a police uniform. Um, as you um, draw walking closer, he smiles and waves at you as you approach. Uh, hello there. I uh, I presume you you must be the uh, the the friends of Colleen. Aye. We uh, we we don't get many uh, tra travellers um, uh, around here, so uh, I'm presuming you you must be her friends. You're a sharp one. That's probably why you're the police uh, man around here. My name is Alphonse. This is Carl, and this is John. Well, that's a, a very pleased to meet you. And um, what can I uh, d do for you? You're looking into the murders around here. Or Colleen, that is. Of course, uh, yes. A, a, a terrible a turn of events. We're, we're not used to such things happening around here. It's, it's such a quiet place. Um, three dead to count, and um, I'm, I'm not sure who's uh, behind it at all. Any help you could give me, I, I'm aware of uh, Colleen's uh, background, and uh, her friends are quite influential and. Uh, and Fine investigators, I heard. Is there rumors true about uh, there being horse tracks in the around the murdered uh, areas? Oh uh, well, uh, I found uh, horse tracks around two of them. Uh, well, and the other happened on a farm, so I couldn't really tell. You want uh, details of a former murders, I, I guess. Um, well, the the first was a a, a young lad uh, by the name of Connor. Um, he he was uh, discovered in the the lane just uh, back down here. Uh, we we found him in the ditch. He had been um, his body had been looked like it had been whipped and and beaten uh, to, to to death. The, the the poor little lad. He was no more than twelve. He he looked uh, terrified. His eyes were wide open when we found him. Um, wide out and staring into space. Uh, it looked like he'd been running some distance. Clothes were covered in dirt and the like. Uh, 
No, the, the the lad was in fine health. Only only twelve uh, twelve years old. Uh, the farmer's lad he was from from round here. He was. Uh, yes, he'd been he'd been out uh, later than he ought. If if you ask me, he shouldn't have been uh, roaming the lanes. But he he was the the first victim, and we never usually have a call for. Uh, to to be worried, uh, worried for our children around these parts. That's until now. Who found the body? It was his father. Uh, went out looking for him, and, and then he, he called me. He, when the lad didn't return home by midnight, he, he knew something was wrong. I, I'm afraid it has been. Uh, yes, it's uh, it's with God now. Terrible business burying your children. The next next victim is a, a, a an elderly man uh, named of Kerry. Uh, he'd actually retired, um, and uh, his his family had taken over his farm. He, he was he was found around the back of the the, the cow shed. Um, he, he he again had got the, the similar marks. Uh, he'd been uh, had been beaten and um, like he'd been lashed lashed to death. Well, he he, uh, he had been uh, f fairly sick of, of of late. That that man, yes. Well, he, he looked like they'd been uh, sort of bludgeoned, like a, a a heavy whip or something like that had taken them. Terrible states the body was in. It must have been terribly painful. Well, um, when uh, Kerry uh, was was killed, his his family said they they heard the sound of whinnying, uh, whinnying horses. Um, that was the, the when people started uh, saying it was a, a headless horseman running around. Um, although uh, I'm not convinced myself, it's it's probably just some uh, some city folk uh, come out here to, to to murder and kill. Who found the old man? Was it its family? Yeah, it was. They they heard this uh, horse uh, whinnying and uh, and the screams. By the time he got there, the, the man was dead, and uh, there, there was no horse to be seen. Did any of them follow the tracks? Uh, n no, they they found um, many sort of tracks around the area, but uh, couldn't work out where it went to. They've been a farm. There's a lot of hoof prints around, you see. Yes, and their father was just murdered. Terrible business. And the, the last victim, you, you say. Yeah, the, the, the last victim there, he was the, or she was the strangest uh, one of all. She was in her bed when she was uh, slain uh, the the, the neighbour um, used to look out for Molly uh, she, she was um, old and uh, lived alone her, her father died or, uh, sorry her husband died a, a, a while ago anyway the, the neighbour hadn't seen her for a couple of days and went round he had a key you see uh, he used to look in on Molly and uh, he, he opened uh, the, the, the door to Molly's and found a most frightful scene within she was she was killed in her bed, uh, blood uh, all over the, over the walls, uh, lashed and beaten uh, again she was. But uh, the, the strangest thing was the uh, muddy uh, hoof prints which were on the, the, the floor of, of the bedroom. But there's no way such a big uh, horse would be able to get into that property, let alone without uh, breaking in. Might just have been placed there to sidetrack us. The timing, well, they, they've been occurring over the past three months, really. Uh, uh, Connor died uh, three months ago. Kerry was a, uh, a few weeks after that, and, um, and and Molly was just three three weeks ago from now. So, uh, yeah, was there anything, one a month. Was there anything special, like a new moon, a full moon, a blood moon? Well, the the, the moon's full now, and uh, no, there's no, uh, no, no, I don't think so. They, they're all on different uh, times. 
but all three murders happened at night. Is that correct? Yes, yes, so all, all under the cover of darkness. Well, I, I presume Molly's was, so uh, there was no witnesses to that one. But should it have been during the day, uh, surely someone would have seen it. Uh, sorry if I may ask, but would it be possible for us to check out the last inc the place of the last incident? Well, this house, well, uh, I'm at a loss for um, what to do. Um, perhaps if you could make me a persuasion roll there, please, uh, Sir Henry, see if this guy trusts you enough to let him in on your invest in the investigation. I'm not Sir Henry, but sure. <laughs> sorry, yeah. Any of you, if you want to make a persuasion roll, I'll try. Is that a case moral or persuasion? Uh, it's oh, a, unskilled. Yes, yeah, unskilled if you haven't got it. I'm like the most trustworthy person ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, you trust that guy who is paranoid about everything. Yeah, and covers his face and has red tinted glasses. <laughs> you'll, uh, f you'll need to drag that Benny into the chat window as well if you wanted to use it. If you can't trust the Germans, who can you trust? Well, he, he says it. it um, the, the, the place is locked up now. It's it's not possible for you to, to, to go and see it. There's nothing to see there anyway. No, nothing more than what I've told you, at least. Well, you know, we came here all the way from London to prevent all these gruesome murders. You don't want someone you love to be murdered next, do you? Damn it. <laughs> You're really scared there. Really scared. Well, we um we we've got our own way of doing things out here, unlike you uh, city folk uh, from uh, f from England. Well, even though you know any of England, I'm you? from the fatherland. <laughs> How dare you say I'm from the smelly place? Uh, you um yes you <laughs> you foreigners anyway yes. He doesn't look very intimidated by you, sadly. <laughs> Jewel, yeah, jewel him over it. So, can you just show us on the map where the murders happen? To see if there's some kind of pattern on it. I can do that for sure. Um, and he uh, he does show you um, where the uh, where, where they occurred. They've all been within a radius of a couple of miles, really. Um, one and the the lane uh, near the, the the kids' farm. Uh, the other on a uh, farm building, a, a sort of cow shed uh, on the across one of the fields. It's a little way away from the actual farmhouse. And the other one is a, a house, Molly's house, just a, a small uh, hovel, really. Well, you, you're free to do whatever you uh, wish, as long as you're not breaking no laws and no trespassing. Is there a bar anywhere in this town? A bar, uh, I'm, I'm afraid not, though uh, the uh, sh shop here does sell pachin and uh, ale. I know, yeah. Irish town that I've well, it's more like a village. It's like a little hamlet. That's the first thing you build. <laughs> well, we you only know, have Guinness as well here, but um, yes, it's just a little uh, hamlet type place where the uh, farmers meet and the like. Yeah, probably is the local barn where they all sort of get together. And... But he's not telling you about it currently. Well, uh, thanks a lot, officer. We'll hope to be of assistance. Uh, 
Glad to hear it and uh, stay out of trouble. I hope um, I hope not to uh, hear your names associated with any complaints in the area. You will never hear the name of someone from the Empire in uh, in association with breaking the law, good sir. So, what do you wish to do now, folks? Yeah, let's go trespass on the crime scene. I think going to Colleen's would be the best because it's the latest one. What about the fourth murder? Uh, th there wasn't one, he's just reporting three. Oh, the letter said four. Did it? Um... It counts Colleen too before the shapeshifters got her. Oh, of course. It does say four, but um, Colleen must have been uh, mistaken. There are three. Hmm. So, what about Colleen until she tells us who the point is? I guess that's another. Oh, but pardon, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, Alright, uh, to the crime scene. <laughs> okay, which uh, crime scene do you wish to go to? Are you going to Molly's, the most suspicious one? Uh, I think so. Okay, um, it's you go head down some nice rustic, rustic country lanes and her hovel is sort of set aside on on its own um, and it's uh, just a sort of small building looks like a single story mission impossible yeah um with uh, probably just a, a couple of rooms uh, inside that she lived in she looked like she was living in poverty pretty much um, but it uh, all looks uh, locked up uh, the curtains are drawn uh, inside what would you like to do are you going to try uh, and break in i can climb the walls and jump through the chimney uh, probably not yet yeah. I think with it being, if it was a large building like the mansion, you might have been able to get down the chimney, but it's probably too um, too narrow in this property to, to get down. Foiled again. All right. Let, let's start with knocking, just in case there is someone that's taken over the place. Okay. You'll knock on the door, and uh, your rap will be met with silence from behind the door. Well, that's a good sign if we're going to break in. Yeah, most of these places have like a back door in all the cottages. Maybe the back door is unlocked? There is a back door. Uh, the back door is locked as well. You'll try the back door. Uh, yeah, sadly, it's all locked up. Can we see anything in, uh, when looking in the windows? The curtains have all been uh, drawn, although you will notice that there is a sticky red substance on uh, one of the windows and splatter marks. Looks like blood on the, the curtains on the inside. I tried a spot check to see if there are any wounds or anything on the house, but uh, yeah. You can't see anything else. So what do you say, gentlemen? Shall we kick open the door? Shoot it open, then. <laughs> I don't know. Sword came to the lock. You could do. I think there is a lock picking skill. I don't know if any of you have got it. I can repair the lock. You could try and force it if you wish. 
this is an old house. We can probably push the walls and they'll cave in. Yeah, it's a hovel. It's not well built. You could you could certainly try and force it, you think. The door doesn't look very sturdy at all. You know what? I'm going to look for tracks in the back door. Maybe there's like a key she hid somewhere on the, uh, the porter potties. Uh, I don't remember how they're called. The ones with the moon sign on them. Oh yeah, they uh, outside. Outside lose. Yeah, I'm gonna try and track. Maybe I'll see like tracks that go somewhere to the side. Maybe there's a hidden key or something. That's a notice roll, please. I notice everything through my glasses. <laughs> you find the privy, but uh, nothing else. Investigating the blood is a notice roll. Everything is red for me. The blood looks, um, yeah, the way it's splattered across the curtain from what you can tell, it looks uh, like um, some sort of uh, long implement has, um, has basically been bashing at someone and the blood has sort of flicked off it and the implement and uh, sprayed across the, across the curtains. You can try to open that window properly. Yeah, you can try and uh, Jimmy open one of the windows if you want. All right, uh, is that a skill? Well, it'll be lot picking if you're trying to do it, um, you know, sort of undo the latch, or you could do strength if you're just trying to force it open and break the window. You know, break the All right, the strength, strength it is then. Okay. Yeah, not well made at all. You'll um, thump on the window and it'll uh, split a little bit of the uh, of the window frame near where the lock is, and the window will uh, swing open. All right, so I try to put aside the curtains and look in. Okay, um, you uh, slide open the curtains and uh, look uh, in to the uh, property. Um, everybody make me a notice um, check, please. Yeah, Alphonse. Okay. <laughs> I did four, uh, uh, four maximums and still only got a four. It's uh, it's good though. <laughs> it's um, it's just what you needed to hear the, the a sound. You can hear the a squeak of the um, gate uh, to the uh, to, to the property. So you've got like a little gate on the end of a path which leads up to it round the front. You're around the back at the moment, um, and you can hear footsteps. Uh, sounds like somebody has is uh, coming uh, to to the property. Cheese it, it's the coppers. Hide. Oh, Benny. <laughs> Benny Hill music starts. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've not actually got in the property, you've just broken the window at the moment. And, we didn't uh, do anything wrong, the window was broken to begin with. <laughs> so you can hear footsteps approaching. What do you want to do? Do you want to run? Do you want to hide? Do you want to try and talk to him? Do you want to? I don't know. We have nothing to hide. I say we go confront him. Well, we are trespassing, but yeah, yeah, okay. He told us we can go anywhere we want as long as we don't break anything. All right. <laughs> yeah, which you promptly did, in which he suspected you might, so he kind of had it here. <laughs> okay, so you all uh, staying there? Uh, no, I think we'll go to meet him. 
Okay. You're heading around the front of the building. All Good right. luck with the block. <laughs> you all try and look casual and look innocent. And um, Aiden, um, he, he le- as you turn around the, the corner um, to uh, meet him, he um, he kind of nods and says, I uh, expected to uh, find you here doing exactly what I told you not to do. Oh no, we were just looking around the house. Well, it, it is private property, this. You, you shouldn't be here. You, you are uh, trespassing on Molly's, uh, Molly's house. But Molly's dead. Well, we're looking for her, her sons uh, somewhere. She, she has sons, I believe. But th- this is not none of your concern. It certainly isn't your property. He says, hey, you, you people just aren't going to give up, are you? Well, no, we are trying so. to investigate gruesome murders like you asked us. We would require a little bit of leeway on the side of the police. Maybe. I'm sure that a man as smart as you would understand. Okay, try another persuasion roll. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> oh dear, this cough is having none of it. Um, he says, uh, <laughs> "Yeah, you, you've been a bit unlucky too, actually." Here, um, do you want to Benny it, or are you uh, sticking with that? Okay. It is pretty much he's better than it. He's about sixty percent chance, I think, as well. Really, with the wild die. Yay! Oh no, it's investigation. However, it's the same die, so I'll let, I'll take it. I'll take it as a persuasion. He um, sighs and says, "Well, if it'll get rid of you um, and get you out of my hair and um, get you off Molly's property," um, he pulls out a. a shiny brass key and heads over to the the door uh, i'll show you inside but there's not much more to see uh, a lot of it's been uh, cleared up now he uh, pushes open the door and um shows you inside it's a small sort of two bedroomed hovel a small two roomed hovel there's like a living area and a sort of bedroom area it it doesn't it sort of smells dusty, it's got a bit of that sort of um, old people uh, smell to it and there's a metallic uh, smell to the air, the smell of blood. No brimstone, no. <laughs> um, he uh, leads you through into the back, into the bedroom. Um, in the bedroom, the first thing you'll notice, and you don't need a notice roll for it because it's pretty obvious, is there's large muddy footprints of, a, uh, of hooves on the floor and um, a lot of it has been cleared up now from the bed sheets and things have been removed from the bed but there is uh, the blood stains um, all over the walls it looks like some have been tried to have been cleaned but there's sort of blood splatter um, all over the walls and um, and floor here it looks like it must have been a gruesome sight when they uh, found molly It is uh, in, indeed a very uh, d- disturbing. We, we've not had nothing like it in these parts. Are you sure all the blood is uh, Molly's? Well, there, there's no one else uh, dead, dead here, and uh, by the by the brutality of the the, the killing, we we think it uh, it was yes, it, it was it's all Molly's blood. I'm sure of it. The the oddest thing is that there was there was no sign of a break in, uh, not, not anywhere the the door the doors and windows. There was no no sign of breakage uh, at all. So, um, the the hoof prints in here are a, a bit of a mystery. It's got everyone spooked talking about headless horsemen and the like, and I, I'm not sure whether they'd be too wrong in that. Um, is the mud any different from the mud outside? Is it like special mud? Mm, notice, uh, check if you like. Dang it. <laughs> oh, tracking actually, probably tracking. 
You probably know Hooray! Something <laughs> trained in! Have you got tracking? Oh, cool. Okay, looking at the mud, you can see it does look uh, similar to the area that the mud actually it, it, it's, um, it is native soil, in effect. There's no dead body there, sadly, yeah, the, the molly's been uh, taken away. And three weeks she'll have been buried. But you, uh, and the bed sheets have been taken, but you can see, you know, blood and the uh, horse's hoof prints are still here. Does it taste human? Um, I'm not sure how you'd tell. Um, <laughs> it's got a metallic taste, tastes like blood. Um, I don't know, how would your character know the difference between animal and whatever blood? I don't know, I'm grasping at store. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it tastes like blood to you. Whenever you've had a, bl a bloody lip, it's kind of what it tastes like, I guess. Uh, looks around uh, for any religious uh, artifacts, something that tells me what she believes in. Oh, uh, definitely a proud Catholic uh, lady. There's a crucifix on, on the wall and there's a, uh, a, a, a small statue of uh, Mother Mary. Alright, so it, it can't, since you have more or less the same religion as everyone else around here, it can't be that. Yeah, uh, every, everyone here is Catholic. Can we, like, check the bed? Like, lift it up, something? Sure, yeah, you can uh, have a lift up the bed and sort of look around it. There's, it looks like uh, she died in a bed and never really moved from the bed. Um, the the area underneath her bed is pretty much free, free from blood. Uh, most of the blood, which looks like it's just been spattered around, really, from probably f f off the weapon. Huh. The murder weapon. One would think she would move at least a little if she was whipped to death. Hey, Aiden, uh, where did you find the tracks for the horse? Uh, the, the horse tracks. Um, well, there's he, he, he points them just in this uh, in the bedroom here. There's no space at all for a man and a horse in height or inside there, right? No, not really. Um, it, it'd certainly have to be stooping down on, on the horse. And it dents in the roof, side ceiling. No, the ceiling's sagging a bit, but it looks like just from age. No dance in it. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> So have you seen all you want to see in here? Can I uh, can I lock the place back up? Uh, did she have any books? Books? Uh, no, I don't think Molly could read. Oh, so she any probably picture books? Any letters <laughs> picture yeah. books. No, no, not really. We're sort of folk around here uh, tend to be more practical people. I'm pretty sure this place is investigated truly now. We probably should uh, move on to the next place. <laughs> afraid, afraid not. No hundred words in Gaelic. No pop-up books, kids' books. Not really any books at all, sorry. Okay. Um, are there any like Celtic ruins in the area that you know of? R ruins around here? Um, no, not not really. Not not in this area. It's just all uh, good, honest uh, farmland. No 
ancient burial grounds for ancient no, uh, kings or something? Um, no. No, no uh, ancient, no ancient nothing. Uh, we're all um, God-fearing folk here. Uh, I've none of that nonsense. Just a good, honest to God farmland and fields. Very good. Thanks, Aiden. You have been very helpful. He um, he'll sigh and um, lock up the property as you uh, as you leave. <laughs> Could be. So what do you say? Shall we go to the farm next, or to the house where they found the boy? The closest. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm going to uh, sort of speed it up a little here because you'll you'll visit the other two um, sites and you'll not find anything unusual to or different really than uh, Aiden told you. The um, the, the farmer, there's not much really uh, much left of, um, of of where Kerry died. He was, um, they'll the point to the spot, but um, it's been a few weeks now, rain since then and the like. Uh, that they, They'll say that they simply heard a horse um, and uh, came out and uh, found his body and, and nothing else. Um, and uh, the, the same really with uh, Connor that was going back you know even further nearly three months ago now and it's really just sort of a, a roadside um, you know where the where he was uh, found yeah so oh, since we don't have any other leads yeah we should probably ask Colleen yeah. however I mean what you have found does seem consistent with your earlier theory that it could well be a dull hand I think we should head back to the mansion and have a chat with Colleen and the kids. Okay, so in the afternoon you managed to return back to uh, Dungurney Manor. And the, um, the two sisters will meet you um, in the kitchen. And we'll sort of excitedly um, say, D did you find anything, uh, anything out? Is it a killer? Or, or, or is it uh, right that there's something supernatural going on here? Uh, it's hard to say, kid, but I'm pretty sure this is supernatural. But fear not, for we are here and we will solve it. Oh, okay. Okay. Listen to the optimist. I am thankful that, that you're here. I would hate to be uh, alone uh, much longer. Do, do you uh, say you were going to speak to Clee? Uh, is your aunt awake, my dear? Uh, I think so, yes. Uh, should we go through to see her? Let's. She takes you through the uh, corridors to the uh, to, to the old uh, woman's room, and she's um, sitting there with her um, looking uh, as, as ill as ever. She is awake, and her pillows have been fluffed up, and she's kind of sitting up a little. Um, at her bedside, there's uh, lots of medicine bottles and uh, vials and the like um, next to her. Oh, um, you've returned, and she smiles weakly. So t tell me, have you found anything uh, more out about the, the creature? Not much, sadly, but we did uh, see some hoof prints inside the house that was way too small to have hoof, uh, a horse in it. And the place was locked up tight, tight so I'm pretty sure no one's actually broke in except us. 
I've never before seen a, a duller hand, but the, the tales I've heard is that they can appear just at your bedside. And she sort of looks around fearfully. I fear it will be, be coming here for me soon. Oh, don't worry. You got two other people way away from the bed, so you're in good shape. Thank you, Sir Henry. Um, girls, can you leave us alone with your aunt for a few minutes? We need to discuss some hunter stuff. Very gruesome details that will keep you up at night. You, should, you don't want to hear this. Of course, of course, we have other things to, to do anyway. Please just call us if you need anything. And they head out. Colleen uh, looks over, over to you. Um, what is uh, troubling you? You never mentioned any family mentor. Uh, I it didn't seem relevant. I have very little family. That these, my uh, niece, nieces, and my nephew are the only family I have now. Uh, I'm fortunate they visited when they did, and it was uh, so kind of them to stay to uh, look after me. So, I'm sure uh, you investigated being such an experienced hunter. Can you give us any leads, any any loose threads that you think we should pick up? Uh, Frida, I've not left my bed for a long, long time now, really. The only thing I've managed to gain is uh, some of the, the rumours from in town. Um, I think you, you could be right in thinking it is a duller hand. I, I think it, it will come here eventually, perhaps. It has been stalking the grounds even now. Um, you could perhaps capture it if you... And... Um, Ambush it. But why would he go after other people if he if you are the target? Well, it is attracted to all souls in, in the area that are near death. But some of the cases were very far from death. There were there was a young boy at the prime of his youth, only twelve years old. I see. That is indeed strange. And she'll <coughs> cough and uh, lean over and is uh, sick once more into the into the, her bowl. Oh, that, that's nausea. Don't worry, it smells like London. <laughs> she, she'll laugh very uh, weakly. Indeed, it probably does. And, and I think I came here to retire from fresh air. I, d I do not know about the child. It, it, it does not um, fit. Um, I, I don't know. Okay, do you have knowledge, medicine, or...? Nope. Well done, Carl. The F? Uh, there's um, a lot of the medicines there you will recognise, Carl. Um, you perhaps looked after somebody who's sick in the past. You'll see laudanum and uh, cocaine and all the usual uh, things that um, are prescribed in this day and age. However, um, you, uh, th there is one bottle that's unusual because it has no label on. The uh, label appears to have been sort of uh, peeled off. It's a uh, green bottle, uh, unmarked. And it's unusual to have unmarked medicine. Don't, don't, don't touch it. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> if she's poisoning herself, uh, you might as well just go along with it and uh, protect her through, through the night, I suppose. I didn't say that out loud while she was listening, just saying. I'm just trying to think what could we also look for. The problem is my character is kind of dumb. He's mostly just muscles. Yeah, that's cool. They're not all investigating some of these here. Uh, or... Yeah, I'll just drink it and see if I die. I have enough vigor. <laughs> oh, drink it. Drink it and see if you lose uh, Benny. I'll be careful. Poisons and Savage Worlds can be really bad. Like, <laughs> like you just die. So, um, I pour like a drop on the floor to see if it melts the floor. Uh, okay. Um, you'll you, you drop a drop on the floor, and yeah, just a, a drop it falls onto the floor. Um, clean and say, oh, careful, careful with that. Well, it's not sizzling or anything, so it's not acid. All right, I'm going to ask uh, Colleen, well, what's in the bottle? I I don't know. Um, I have so many medicines. I, I let um, I let Randall deal with those. Randall, you say? Does he have any knowledge of alchemy? No, he he just uh, spoke to the the doctor from Dublin, and uh, he he just knows what I, I should take. Ah, okay. So patrolling during the night, and then see if he shows up again, or you know, again. I mean, Auntie, yeah. just a small question: If you die. Uh, do you have a will? Who gets the house, the money? Oh, uh, my, uh, my uh, all my estate is to be divided between my remaining relatives, my two nieces, and uh, and my nephew will uh, get a third of everything each. That's good to plan ahead. Which is a fortune. You think this place must be worth it? Fat, tidy sum. What's up, the horse? Seriously, it's a horse. Is you, uh, are you going to go to the window? Yes, I'm going to go to the window and check where the, uh, wherever the sun came from. You head over um, to the window, draw back the uh, curtains, and uh, look out. It is uh, evening now, being uh, November. The uh, the darkness uh, that arrives quickly in these parts. Flanked in the um, in the fog, you can uh, just make out the the figure of a horse. It uh, appears briefly and then uh, disappears uh, behind some uh, bushes. As it uh, looks like it's walking around the perimeter. Do anyone else here ride horses? Clean. I I didn't hear anything. Well then, let's go out meet uh, the mystery horse out there. I'm thinking about like grinding some gold in a circle around Colin. 
<laughs> that don't work. <laughs> There are quite a few gold um, items, jewellery and things in her bedroom that you could place around her bed if you, you wish. I'll give her like something gold that she can use to whack something if it gets close to her. And I tell her, take this mental. If anyone comes through the door that isn't us, just whack it. Yeah, yeah, don't need I to award you all a Benny for general um, role playing and also for the, uh, for the gold thing there. At this point, you're heading out now, are you? Yeah. All right, I arm myself and go out. We did bring our own guns, didn't we? I'm not carrying a gun, I'm carrying my two rapiers. Well, at least I'm carrying my Derringer. But I hope I was carrying the, or at least brought along the rifle. You step out of the uh, front of the, of the mansion. So you're just on the steps outside there. Peering through the, the mists. You will hear first the, the sound of horses' hooves, and then through the uh, fog and gloom, you will see a black rider um, standing um, with uh, headless on a massive black steed. Um, as it um, approaches, you'll see one hand um, releases a long bone-like whip from its hip, and uh, the whip uncoils, falling down uh, onto the floor to drag along beside the horse. And I'll place him on the map. Can you show the map, please? I closed it. I sure. Think. Carl uh, brings up his rifle and yells out into the darkness. Show yourself. Okay, and a um, voice um, will... Um... Well, a horseman um, will appear, and um, he says, uh, and you get a deep voice, it says, Carl, I pronounce your doom, I come for your soul. Everyone knows everybody in this town, seriously. How it knew your name, you do not know, however. Alphonse, you are first to act. Okay, so first of all, Alphonse just screams in rage, invoking righteous fury, which is something for my slayer affection. It's an edge. Excellent. You are terribly easy to anger, aren't you? Yes, but it's like a cold anger, like he's completely calm and yet his entire body like shakes like a wolf about to hunt its prey. Oh, I like it. It's like a controlled anger. Yeah, that's part of why he wears the sunglasses, because the, his eyes turn like blue, like fiery blue, when he is in this rage mode. Excellent, okay. Uh, there's not much I can do. I can stand up and block him to protect you guys. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll jump over the banister. Okay, if you want to jump down there, it's about an eight foot drop. Uh, you can try and do it without uh, hurting yourself by making an agility roll if you wish. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, which you easily do. 
and I stand like I'm guessing the he can go everywhere, so I'm just gonna stand with my back to the banister and unsheathe both my swords and stand ready. Okay, you could go on defensive if you wish. Um, what's defensive? Uh, does? It, it, it'll give you plus two to your uh, parry until you, your next go. Ah, okay, I'll do that. And can, uh, hold on. What, can I do it, or is that something? Uh, I can put it on for you if you like. Okay, thanks. So that's what I'll. All right. Oh, right. Uh, the horse hasn't actually done anything yet. You know, I'm going to just aim at him until uh, until he actually does something threatening. Uh, you're so, going to aim, okay? That's great. So that's um, that's um, hold, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. What aim means is on your next go, you'll have plus two to hit. If that's what you want to do, or you can hold your action, and try and interrupt him when he does something. It's up to you how you want to play it. But if you aim uh, for the, aim for the full round, it'll give you a bonus next time. Yeah. Uh, uh, no aim. The regular aim is plus two on if you don't move, uh, well, according to the rules at least. Yeah, um, I think I think you get it on your next turn though. And yeah. uh, but uh, there's something called uh, getting the drop on that gives me actually plus four of my next attack and damage, but that's almost not the same. That's not the same thing. No, no, that's a process yeah. I can think about. Yeah, also, the... you might have a height advantage depending on how tall the horse is. The uh, height advantage will give you cover. Um... Anyway, I'm just going to hold until he does something threatening and then it's an agility check or just agility check. If, yeah, yeah. He's holding. Okay, cool. All right, the, the Dullahan, um, well, first off, it, um, the horse rears up and uh, whinnies. Gotta do that. And um, everybody, you need to make me a fear check, which is a spirit roll at minus two. If you fail, it'll be a roll on the fright table. So far, Sir Henry, <laughs> come at me, you headless, yeah, okay. So, uh, Alphonse, sorry, you need a spirit check at minus two, please, thank you. Oh, you're fine. Sorry, I didn't do the minus two, I rolled before you said it. Don't worry, your ice, <laughs> nerves of steel you have, you're, uh, you're not bothered. The other two of you, though, unless you want to benny your fear checks, you're going to be rolling on the fright table. It's up to you. The rage is fueling my, and I feel no fear. Oh. <laughs> okay, go for it, Sir Henry. Good luck. The minus two is quite nasty, actually. For oh, you've done it though. Well done. Okay, even with the minus two, you uh, stand your ground. So it's just um, Carl now. Um, Carl, are you um, are you going to bend your roll or are you going to take a roll on the fright table? It's actually a plus two because it's a a, a minus two creature. So let me just check that. Uh, eight, nine, ten. It puts you into panicked, um, which means the character immediately moves his full pace plus running die away from the danger and is shaken. So um, I'm going to shake you and you'll run back into the into the property. Uh, 
Yeah, actually, if you want to roll a d6 for me, please, Carl. It's just says how far you'll. Okay, so 12 spaces. This is not the time for uh, eating another late dinner, Carl. Get back here. <laughs> you get to about that. You, you just turn and um, as the creature with its hollow eyes and demonic appearance rears up, you... Uh, I, 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 I don't want to protect the lady. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the, the dull hand continues, it's called, it says, a uh, call... Uh, I come for your soul, and um, that is it's pronounced doom upon you. It's basically saying it's going to collect your soul. It's pronounced doom on you. There's no save to this, sadly. Uh, you're but you're basically doomed, and it gives you minus two to all trait tests until dawn. I'll put that on you. You can only do that once. Sorry, Carl. Oh, I'm too... Don't lose your head, Carl. Stay in the game. And it um, moves round the horse, um, mount, starting to mount the steps and heading towards uh, poor Sir Henry. Luckily, Sir Henry, it's your go. Get him. All right. Yeah, you hit him. Sadly, it's a sort of glancing blow off the creature. Carl, oh, you're still on hold, Carl, actually, so you can um, take I, I, your... I, I actually lost the hold because I'm shaken. Oh, does Shaken knock your hold out? Um, oh, I think it does, doesn't it? I forgot about that. I did a summary sheet of uh, rules for just an okay. hour ago. Hold on, before you start sure, this I turn, I want to use my card. Good call, yeah, it's time to play those adventure cards. Oh, well done. Okay, so you get a plus two on all your, on pretty much everything you do, and you can go whenever you like. I'll drag a joker onto you. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe get over here and try to hit the horse's legs under him to make him fall. Uh, can I do that? Okay, so you're trying to, um, yeah, you, you try and sort of knock the horse's legs away. Do you want to do it with agility or strength? Actually, I thought about slashing the horse's legs. Oh, okay. I can do it with agility or strength, if you prefer. Um, you can do a, it looks like um, to you that the horse and the rider are actually one entity. Um, a centaur! Yeah, kind of, because it's like a spiritual being, which is, um, yeah, all one thing, essentially. So uh, but if so, you can do a kind of cool shot to the legs if you want, though. Or an agility trick, or a trick to try and knock it over, or something like that. Yeah, I think I'll use my golden rapier to try and stab the horse, because he's on the stairs, and it's like... In a precarious situation, so I think I may be able to do some damage. Okay, your uh, defend runs out. Um, and okay, yeah, do uh, make an attack. Do you want a wild attack or? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. 
it does leave you a bit vulnerable while the attack. Usually you want to make sure whatever you, yeah, we'll go for it. Yeah. <laughs> I like doing it, but I'm crazy. So am I. Good call. Just like burning with fury, I swipe both of the swords, but um, the golden sword especially, on the horse's legs and try to hit him. Excellent. I think you'll need to put plus two in your own modifier box before you do this. I don't think it recognises the joker automatically for you. Okay, I, I see minus two in brackets under my name. What does that mean? Um, for Alphonse, minus two. Don't know. Um, if you left click or left, sorry, middle mouse button in the modifier, it should clear all your modifiers. Oh, okay. And then you probably want to put a plus two in there uh, for the Joker bonus. And good luck. Okay, so I need to do a plus two, so I have plus four. Yeah, the wild attack will be yeah uh, included automatically. A bit of luck. Okay, I'm bending. Yeah, you can bend critical failures in this thing, so you can bend that. I do play some settings where critical fail stands, but this isn't one of them. You're lucky. It's a bit more heroic. So, yeah, good call. Oh, mate, you're one off. Um, hold on. You got I'm banning two. again. Oh, well, one, one second. Sorry, you should have had another plus two on that. That's a hit. Ah, okay. That's good. It's a, it's a normal hit, though. I mean, you could banny and try and get the raise so you get the additional damage die, or you can let it stand up to you. Uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, go with it. You're just unlucky a lot at the moment. Yeah, so I'll Benny again. Okay. And then, yeah, plus two new modifiers and chuck there. No problem, I added the plus <laughs> four thing. He's like your unlucky mascot, is he? Oh, it rolled off a ten. Oh, you got the raise though. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, yeah, just drop your damage on him. Oh no, you'll need put plus two in the modifier and then drop your damage on him. Yeah, uh, also I have the Righteous Fury, which is another plus one, I think. Oh, plus one to all strength based damage rolls versus supernatural oh. evil kids. Awesome, yeah, so put plus three in the modifiers and drop it on. This is going to be a big hit. It's going to eat up some of my bennies, most likely. Good luck. <laughs> the horse whinnies as you uh, whack it really hard. That's five, five damage. Oh dear, what am I supposed to do about that? Okay. I'm not sure. I already played the card, so I don't think I can do two. Um, okay, so you've done 28 damage in total, so you're going to cause 5 wounds on the dollar hand. I need to do uh, do some... Um, some Basically, damage. Alphonse sweeps through all four legs of the horse as he runs uh, across the stairs. I'm desperately trying to soak. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> This is my last Benny now. I've got to get an eight or more to keep him up. Come on. No, fails. Oh, no. Then, as the, he cuts through the legs, he just takes the golden sword and shoves it up the stomach of the horse. You, uh, yeah, you managed to, basically the horse falls, that was a cracking blow. You um, cut it open with your um, gold-lined rapier, which is a really good job you had that. Uh, well done for the uh, initial uh, initial finding out about the creature's weaknesses. Otherwise, you really would have been doomed. And uh, the creature goes down, it rolls down, down the steps, and um, sadly, a uh, smoke um, lifts up around it, and um, it, the, the creature shimmers and um, eventually disappears. And it appears like a coldness, a sort of dark oppressiveness over the land is lifted with, as the Dullahan uh, disappears. Well done.
That was one crazy roll, well done. Damn it. <laughs> Alright, now I think we're, we're just coming up to time where we um sort of uh, going to finish here, so I kind of want to wrap it up. Um, Is there anything else that you, you, you are doing? Is yeah, I'm going to run, run, keep running until I'm uh, in a, uh, that lady, uh, lady Colleen's place. You can say this dollar hand. I I can think of something clever to say. Oh yeah, I'm hiding here. I'm I don't, still don't know if you killed them or not. I'm hiding. Everyone safe here? Good. Yep, yeah, you uh, you get around that. Kaleem will be pleased to uh, see you. And she's like, oh, "Are you all right?" The job is done, mentor. The beast is dead. And, uh, oh, thank God. I was so afraid that he's going to kill me right there. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Um, I, I'm so happy that this uh, creature has gone and I can uh, go to my uh, death peacefully. And the other and the locals around here are safe now. Thank you so much, Rippers. It was nothing for you, Mentor. But you should really have a slap that uh, nephew of yours around a little. Make, uh, get him some sense. I, I understand he's rude and can be difficult to get along with, but, but he means well. He, he does tend to me. If you ever need us again, you know who to call. From the behind? Wasn't she about to die or something? Well, she looks very frail. She probably doesn't look like she has too much longer. Maybe we can grab some, something from the doll hunt onto her so she live like an extra head. Uh, I think you need sort of a ripper's lab thing to to do that, and uh, the edge ripper ripper tech edge thing. I don't think you're going to be thankful for mounting a horse head on her. <laughs> Listen, yeah. the doll hand is doesn't need the head anymore. She does. Maybe install a new spine from the whip. <laughs> Can we take like any memento from this horse thing? Um, uh, are dollar hands also uh, are they summonable? Possibly summonable. They they kind of it's likely it was just attracted to Colleen because of her attachment with the um with the supernatural anyway. Um, but they, they can, can be summoned in, into existence also, possibly. Uh, but you, you don't know yourself really how that would work. Is there anything else you wish to do here? Or do you return to London? Well, I would like to take a memento and show it to the officer and go nano banana. <laughs> okay. But I have class, so I won't. <laughs> For the emperor and everything. Henry, you do not stab our mentor. Oh, you're planning to stay here until her death? Not even going to be months. How do we know? That can be arranged. Do, do any of you have a healing skill? 
If you do, you can make a, a roll to try and, you know, work out how close to death she is. I had, had my coin character right now. Uh, I'll roll unskilled for the hell of it. Mm. You need a healer. <laughs> yeah, you already did. I think you got a full success, which is quite a difficult thing to do, so it should really have, it's not an easy check, you should really have modifiers on it, I think. Um, so you won't be certain, um, although... I will ask her if she has any last wishes, something that she wants us to do. I'll ensure that my will is um, is enacted properly, and uh, and and also uh, continue the good fight while I'm gone. But while the cabal's defeated, they're still out there. The, the beasts do not let them rise again. So. We execute her will. Uh, okay. All right. So, I mean, you can hang around until her death if you wish. Though she doesn't particularly want you to, she really wanted your assistance, um, you know, we're here with this problem. <laughs> Kids do all the things. <laughs> only game. Yeah, only games for it. To London, back to a horrible air. Okay, let's do it. Okay, you will uh, head back to London and um, about a month later you will hear of the um, sad demise of uh, Colleen Moran, a uh, long faithful um, ripper. And uh, you'll be able to uh, see that the estate is indeed split between the three, um, three children. As long as it's natural causes, that's, that's good. As, uh, as far as you know, it's natural causes. Was it natural causes? Anyway, um, we'll uh, bring it to a uh, an end uh, tonight, today, tonight, this afternoon, whatever it is for you. And um, thank you for for playing. And uh, we'll uh, do thank the you same. And we'll uh, we'll we'll do it fortnightly. Yeah, is that a better way of doing it? I think. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, Cog will have his internet back by then. I will give you some XP. Oh, one second. I'll try and give you some XP. Oh yeah, there you go. Game session award two XP. Should all have a two XP on there. I was playing. Hope you all enjoyed that, and I will uh, yeah see you in two weeks, folks. Alright, see you in two weeks. Thank you.